Deputy Speaker. Shadow Leader of the House, Thangham Debenet. <laughs> thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. To ask the Leader of the House as she will give us the forthcoming business. Leader of the House. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The business for the week commencing the 31st of October will include Monday, the 31st of October, remaining stages of the Genetic Technology Precision Breeding Bill, followed by consideration of Lord's amendments to the Product Security and Telecommunications Infrastructure Bill, followed by a motion to approve a money, resolu money resolution relating to the Protection from Redundancy, Pregnancy and Family Leave Bill. Tuesday, the 1st of November, second reading of the UK Infrastructure Bank Bill, Lords. Wednesday, the 2nd of November, Opposition Day debate, sixth allotted day, debate on a motion in the name of the Scottish National Party, subject to be announced. Thursday, the 3rd of November, debate on a motion on the independent review of smoke free 2030 policies followed by general debate on the government's white paper, a fairer private rented sector. The subjects for these debates were determined by the Backbench Business Committee. Friday the 4th of November, the House will not be sitting. The provisional business for the week commencing the 7th of November includes second reading of the Social Housing Regulation Bill, Lords. Shadow Leader of the House, Diane Debenet. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I, I thank the Leader of the House for the forthcoming business. And can I start by congratulating the Right Honourable Lady as being, for being reappointed as Leader of the House? There were suggestions it might not have been the job she was hoping for, but as Parliament's representative in government and government's representative in Parliament, we both know that she has an incredibly important role. I know she takes her responsibility seriously, and I look forward to continuing to work with her to ensure members are properly able to hold the government to account. And in that vein, I repeat my regular plea for prompt responses from ministers and uh, to MPs on behalf of our constituents. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister's promise to restore integrity and accountability lasted barely a few hours. The Home Secretary was appointed to the job she was sacked from just six days earlier for breaching the ministerial code and putting our national security at risk. And we now hear that there were apparently multiple breaches of the ministerial code, even involving documents on cyber security. Now, the first duty of any government is to keep this country safe. This is exceptionally serious. Does the Leader agree there must be an urgent investigation? The Home Secretary said she um, rapidly reported her mistake on official channels and informed the Cabinet Secretary, but we now hear that the evidence was put to her rather than the other way round. And despite this, yesterday at the dispatch box, the Prime Minister said that the Home Secretary raised the matter and accepted her mistake. This is really important. My right honourable friend, the Shadow Home Secretary, has asked two points of order, two urgent questions, and sent a letter to the Cabinet Secretary, yet we still don't have clarity. It is imperative that the Prime Minister sets out a clear timeline of who reported what, to whom, and when. If he has misled the House, if he has misled the House on this serious national security matter, will he come to the Chamber, apologise and correct the record? And this is yet another example of why a government ethics adviser is so badly needed. After months of calling for one, I do welcome the announcement yesterday that this would be done shortly, but it is obvious that one is needed urgently. So could the Leader give us a time frame? Madam Deputy Speaker. The new Prime Minister claims a mandate from the 2019 general election, but that was three Prime Ministers and several national crises ago. Meanwhile, they're pulling legislation left, right and centre. Which sofa has all the government's missing legislation fallen down the back of? Where is the energy bill? Where is the animal welfare bill? Um, Mr. Madam Deputy Speaker, where is the online safety bill, which was first mooted a decade ago? Now, we've been waiting four years. We've been waiting four years. Has the Prime Minister been forced to pull it to appease his new Trade Secretary? Since the Conservatives first announced their intention to regulate, seven other jurisdictions have introduced online safety laws. And in the UK, in that time, online crime has exploded. Child sexual abuse online has become rife, and scams have proliferated. Every day that goes by without the bill, the suffering continues. We hear it's been delayed and not pulled. So can I yet again offer Labour's willingness to work with the government to get this bill over the line as soon as possible? Will the government accept our offer? And can she tell us when it's coming back? 
The government is dragging its feet when it comes to climate and nature emergency. The Environment Act legally requires the Environment Secretary to set long-term targets for air quality, water, biodiversity, resource efficiency and waste reduction by the 31st of October. She's got three days left. Could the leader please wake the new Environment Secretary up from the nightmare of the last few weeks and ask her to get on with the job? Madam Deputy Speaker, this is a Prime Minister nobody elected with no mandate who is letting down the British people. It's time that this government accepted the British people deserve a choice between the failed Tory trickle-down economics of the past and the green, clean, sustainable future with a Labour government. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, well, I thank the, uh, the Honourable Lady uh, for that. Uh, her questions uh, form um, uh, themes of uh, democracy and integrity, both very important issues. First, let me say to her and reassure her, it is not a disappointment to find myself here, um, in part because I very much enjoy the exchanges I have across the dispatch box with the, uh, the Honourable Lady. Um, it was important we tested... Uh, um, the proposition of a contest, uh, and we did, uh, to destruction, and uh, I think that is a, is a, has been a good outcome. We, of course, on this side of the House with our party have uh, one member, one vote, and of course the leader of the Honourable Ladies' Party tried to end that uh, for Labour. Her leader tried to abandon uh, had to abandon his attempts to return to uh, an electoral college, and uh, there were accusations of uh, gerrymandering and um, holding the membership in contempt. Um, but of course, the Labour Party have some uh, form on this when they blocked an election when Parliament needed one, and their leader campaigned to overturn the result of the EU referendum. So I'm not going to take any lectures uh, from the members uh, opposite on uh, honouring uh, uh, democracy. Um, with regard to uh, integrity, yes, uh, this is the ethics advisor is a matter for the Prime Minister, and he intends to uh, uh, bring that decision uh, forward. Uh, it will be a matter for him, but he has made uh, that commitment. Um, but I know the uh, allegations that are, uh, have been made by uh, members on the opposite side of this House, that there is, uh, that there is uh, support for jobs. As far as the Prime Minister is concerned, there is support for jobs. He has given uh, support for 163,000 kickstart jobs. Uh, he has given support for uh, job entry schemes benefiting uh, 177,000 people who were unemployed and, of course, paying the wages of 11 million people in this country to protect them uh, and their jobs. Uh, our record is getting nearly 4 million people uh, back into work um, with the dignity of a paid packet, uh, and that's one I'm very uh, proud of. Um, she mentions prompt responses. I have had that meeting with the uh, Home Office Perm Sec, uh, and uh, all members can uh, either have a bespoke service where they sit in a surgery and go through their cases, uh, or they can have the usual responses, the written replies. Uh, both those options are open, and we hope that all the backlogs will be cleared uh, by the end of the year. Uh, but there are, there are ongoing improvements to that, but I, I hope honourable members will, will have an improved service uh, shortly. The online safety bill will be back uh, in the House uh, shortly. It is a priority uh, for this government, remains a priority for this government. Uh, we do need to ensure that there is time for members to properly look at amendments, and that was uh, the issue why it was not uh, brought back before. Uh, but I will be announcing business uh, in the usual way, and we are uh, um, uh, committed to that bill. Um, one thing she didn't mention was uh, our diversity. I think all members of this House can be uh, very proud that we have the first British Asian uh, Prime Minister. Um, uh, he was being sworn in this morning, which is why we've had this unusual uh, uh, time for business questions today. I'm very proud that my party has had three women Prime Ministers and now the first British Asian Prime Minister, and obviously many other great British institutions around the country who are enabling talent to thrive. Labour have a little way to go on this. Um, even Doctor Who has a more successful track record in terms of the diversity of its, its lead characters, um, but uh, all other business will be announced in the usual way.